Situated in the midst of rich pasture lands and noted for its cattle and sheep, Roscommon Town is the county town of County Roscommon. It has an approximate population of 4,500 people. The town today is a typical medium-sized one with its shops, schools, bus offices, etc. Today's Roscommon Town has been shaped down through the centuries by its inhabitants and visitors. The information on this video is just the tip of the iceberg as regards the wealth of heritage that is out there, some already known and some not. The Sacred Heart Church is the most prominent building in the town of Roscommon. It is made entirely of local stone. Construction began in 1903 and was completed in 1925. The spire of the church rises 25 metres and it seems even taller as the building stands atop a small hill. The front is adorned by a small sunken grotto. Above the front entrance there is an extraordinary mosaic that includes the images of two bishops responsible for the construction of the church. It was designed and built by an Italian group called Salviate. Inside there is a replica of the Cross of Khan that dates back to 1123. This wonderful example of Irish craftsmanship was made in Fjord between 1120 and 1123. More than 750 years ago, Phelim O'Connor, King of Connacht, established the Abbey of Roscommon. It is found in the outskirts of the old town. The Roscommon ruin has many highlights including an effigy of the king dressed in a robe and mantle. It is thought to be O'Connor who is buried on the grounds, or possibly one of his successors. Though the structure is usually referred to as an abbey, it is more accurately described as a friary, as it was created for the Dominicans. It faced many difficult times during its history, including a fire in 1270 and a lightning strike in 1308. The church originally consisted of one long aisle. The original lancet windows in the east and west walls were replaced in the 15th century by tracery windows which have largely disappeared. Those in the south wall are still preserved. The north transit was added in the 15th century. The tower remained until 1792 and in 1577 the church and grounds were taken over by Sir Nicholas Malby. Originally built as a rectangular plant courthouse in the mid 18th century, this building was bought by the parish priest Father John Madden in 1829. The authority of this building is obvious from its location in the centre of the market square opposite the former prison. Converted into a Roman Catholic church, the front and rear auditions were erected in 1844. The building still serves the local community as a bank. The old jail is the second most prominent building in the town and faces the back of the Bank of Ireland. Now poorly converted into shopping and accommodation, almost all trace of antiquity has been lost. The facade is all that remains of the original structure. The original building is thought to have been designed by Richard Cassells in 1736. The jail had the distinction of having a hangwoman, Lady Betty, a criminal who had her sentence withdrawn on the provision that she performed the unpaid task of hangwoman. In 1822 it was taken over for use as a lunatic asylum, and in 1833 it became a lazaretto, a place where outcasts who suffered from smallpox were confined. Sometime after 1840 the building was converted to residential and commercial use. The old jail is a detached seven bay, four story building with an advanced base. The building now serves as an outlet centre with living apartments to the third floor. A modern extension was built to the rear as well as a modern three story roofed walkway linking the main building to the modern cylindrical four story stone clad stairwell tower. Internally the jail has been largely renovated although the front facade has been retained. The tile roof is concealed by castellated parapet walls with step render chimney stacks. The jail is made with random coarse limestone walls with tool coins window surroundings to front elevation. String courses can be seen above second and third stories and niches and loop like windows to towers. Stone and rendered walls to the rear and side elevations. Label mouldings to windows of the central three bays. Segmental and pointed segmental arched door openings to centre and end bays. Wood mouldings to the centre entrance leading to the arcade of shops. The original windows have been replaced with timber sash windows and cast iron gates to the main entrance. The structure is street fronted and situated in a prominent position at the northern end of Market Square.
so what can local historians tell us about this trail? Uh, so Willie, so can you tell me anything about the old jail in Roscommon in the background? Yeah, well of course you know on the the old jail is one of the one of the most famous buildings in Roscommon town and one of the most easily recognisable because it's there in in the right in the middle of the square. We know that the jail was built around eighteen seventeen thirty six for that period, uh, designed by a relatively famous uh, man architect called Richard Cassells who did some other very important buildings in the country. So the jail would be there and. If you know the town there, you know, there's a building in the centre of the square called now called the Bank of Ireland. And that building was built a little bit later than the jail in, in 1763 as the courthouse. But it replaced a previous courthouse, which was there, we know to have been there around 1719, because we have an account of where it collapsed. So it would have been very, it would have been uh, very easy to move prisoners from where they were tried in the courthouse, just back to the jail. So the jail itself is a big three-storey building. Now the insides of it has been completely changed, but up to the time the present structures were put in there, you could still see the cells. There were thirty-six cells in all in 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 there. You know, and in fact, you can see one of the one of the doors from the from the jail is still kept there in the museum in town. You know, there yeah. inside a decent restaurant, so you can have a look at that there. So, like being a prisoner in the eighteenth century was very different to what we would know of prisoners now. In fact, uh, one remark difference is that your family were responsible for bringing you in food. So the, it was only later in the 18th century that they actually got around to providing uh, food in the prisons for the prisoners. So if you had nobody, you probably wouldn't eat too much. And if you had, Jeez. and probably sleeping accommodation was probably just a bed of straw or whatever, you know, yeah. so it should be very straightforward. So the kind of people who got put in there were crimes that we wouldn't even consider now, maybe we'd say, at the end of the 18th century into the early 19th century, there were a lot of guys in there who would be called white boys or ribbon men. These would be guys who were causing agitation on estates uh, against the tides and against landlords and that. Or a lot of the crimes that were a crime that you wouldn't ever hear of now. Hawking cattle was a great one that they were put in for, where they would cut the hooves of the cattle and maim them and the landlord's cattle they wouldn't be able. And of course, being was common, there were some guys in there for sheep stealing as well. That was par, course, for, the, yeah. par for the course in there. And there were quite a lot of debtors in there as well you know so you could say there's a prison report from the early 19th century from 1807 which talks about there being about nine debtors in there a number of people uh, the two people in that year were committed for capital offenses which means they had to be executed okay and mm -hmm. can you tell me anything about uh, there's a story about a hang woman there there was yeah that's that goes back probably that story is recorded by a man called isaac weld in the statistical survey of was common in 1832 and at the end of the, his description, he says he talked to some people who actually knew this woman. But it would seem that she lived probably in the 1780s, 1790s, maybe around 1800. And the story is that this lady, who was not a Roscommon woman, but actually believed to be a Kerry woman, uh, and she lived in the town and she kept an inn. Now, she had a reputation for not being a very nice person. And she had a son who went off, made his fortune. And when he comes back, it said uh, the story goes that he wanted to see if his mother's temperament had improved anything. So he knocked on the door and he asked for accommodation in the inn and she took him in and set him up. But then she realized that he had quite a bit of money and during the night she went to take the money and whatever and he ended up being killed. So she actually killed her own son un unbeknownst to herself. So then she was committed to, to prison for uh, the convicted of the murder and was due to be hanged. But... The story goes that on, on the day that she was to be hanged, uh, the hangman wasn't available. So the governor of the jail offered anybody who would perform the duties of the hangman for the day freedom from their own crime. So of all the people who were to be hanged that day, only one stepped forward to do the dirty work, and that was this lady, who got the name of Lady Betty then. She was probably Elizabeth whatever, mm. and she got the name of Lady Betty in Roscommon. So she continued for whatever number of, of years, and the story remained on in folklore in the town and in the surrounding area uh, all down the centuries about this famous hangwoman from Roscommon. Historically, she's difficult to prove, but the fact that a number of people were able to tell well about her uh, yeah, it it would seem to say that. So the jail continued on then in town until in 1814, the grand jury, which would have been meeting in what we now know as the Bank of Ireland, that would have been their meeting place. They d they voted in eighteen fourteen to open up a, a new jail, and we know that the first prisoner uh, moved into the new jail in eighteen eighteen. So it would seem then that the jail ceased to function 
as a jail yeah. now. But it had a whole number, I suppose you probably know this, it had a whole lot of other uses since that. Uh, in 1832, it became, uh, in, uh, in, I think 32, it became uh, a lunatic asylum, as they called them those. Mm. We now call that a psychiatric hospital. And then later it became what they called a lazaretto, which was a place for people with uh, smallpox where they were yes. confined to take them away from the general population. And then towards the end of the 1840s, it, it, it went back to commercial and residential use, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, in fact, I remember myself, my earlier visits to Roscommon back in the late 60s, early 70s, there was a, a leather business in one of the places, I think, where the auctioneers run down there, you know. So it's a fine building, yeah. and then uh, it was, it actually, one of the first jailers in it was a man called Michael Shearer, and uh, for some reason or another, the actual ownership of the building fell to the descendants of the jailer. Mm. So when it was, uh, it was bought out by some local businessman in the early part of the 20th century, and eventually it ended up being owned by a developer, so to speak, yes, and who oh. sold it on, and now we have a shopping centre where we had a jail. That's fair enough. That's all. Thanks very much, Willie. Thank you.